Damn, it's comments on here already, or? That's, that's the Dickens of reality. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how they do it. They always there. I don't, I don't know how they do it. Hey, hey, what's up? So, um, yeah, you know, I wanted to, I was interested in talking about the um, relationships based, on, especially based off of our interaction today. Um, I was definitely interested in speaking on the relationships between black men and black women, that entire dynamic. And then also, um, I remember there was a, uh, a point that was made about feminism um, where it was concerned with Sister Noble, she said the people came at her and said that she was a feminist or whatever. So yeah. I wanted to kind of give a perspective on that relationship and how oftentimes, unfortunately, Black men, because Black men don't have systematic power, um, they base their desire to protect a Black woman on whether or not they want to have sex with her. So if she is aesthetically appealing, then in most cases, they will decide at that point if they feel like she's worthy of, uh, if not protection, at least, of course, uh, respect or positive treatment. Now, mm -hmm. the, the, the protection can come in if, you know, another race of a man is, you know, being overtly disrespectful, not even covertly, but overtly where like calling her a nigger or putting his hands on her. But, you know, anything that is remotely um, un, I guess, un, uh, how do you, how do you call it when something is not extreme? Now, I'll just say covert. If the disrespect mm -hmm. of a black woman is covert, in most cases, some black men won't even, you know, try to protect her if he doesn't find her sexually attractive. Whereas with mm -hmm. these other races of men, the protection uh, of the women of their other of their race, when it comes to especially other races of men, is just almost always there. Um, and so you have black women that complain about feminism, and usually the black women that complain about feminism are the black women that are least protected by black men and oftentimes the most ridiculed by black men and uh again if there's no sexual desire that he has for her in the most minute instance his protection of her is not warranted and um you know it's sad but that's the reason why a lot of black women become feminists or uh lesbians you know or just have a pure disdain towards black men because there's no protection there's no value in a black woman specifically one that is aesthetically black and malcolm x said it you know um he said the most the least protected woman is the black woman um yeah. and we can see a lot of that in a lot of these organizations that these black women go to for refuge and protection but they get none in these organizations. They'll become an Israelite just to go to these organizations thinking that they'll get protected by these men that's there. They'll become Muslims just to go to these organizations to for the same thing, to get protected by the men that's there. And the unfortunate thing is, is that those men are not trying to protect them. They're trying to control them again because in this system, you are black men. Black men, I can't speak to the actual um, innate feeling that a black man goes through or feels when he's in a system that's dominated by another man. But what I am aware of is that he's aware of as a black person that he has no systematic power. Now, being a man, the only other person that you can exert any type of power over, if not your children, is the women of your race. And so, and by doing that, a lot of black men 
they disrespect their women or um, they've been trained or brainwashed into, you know, treating them as sexual objects. And that's the reason why you have these black women showing they ass more than they face or anything else. And there's another reason to that as well, because that is what they feel is going to draw black men. White men ain't thinking about your ass and neither are his, uh, Hispanic, white Hispanics or Asians. And so, you know, it's just the degradation of the race altogether. Um, but there's a, there's another reason as to the reason why uh, uh, women show their ass and wear tights and stuff like that. They don't want to, you know, they want to divert the attention from their face and go straight there. But I'm not going to get into that right now. But um, yeah, you know, it's, it's just bad that the black man has been whittled down to nothing more than his penis. And mm. so... If your penis is workable, then that's really what you have. That's your only form of power. And essentially, it's a powerful tool because the black man's penis can wipe out this entire motherfucking race and create a strong... Uh, and when I say this race, I'm talking about these, these other nations of race, these other nations of people. His penis is powerful. His penis is a weapon. However, though, instead of utilizing it as a powerful tool... He uses it and has been taught to use his penis as just a sexual instrument and, 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 and the black woman is a sexual instrument. So again, we sexualize each other, but that is the reason why there's a discrepancy between the black man and the black woman. Then you also have to understand that a lot of black women, um, they raise these black boys, but they don't do it properly. And then so you have black males who grow up having a disdain towards black women based off of the way their mothers and the women that's around them have treated them growing up. And they begin to see black women in a negative light. And um, it's just, it's a, it's a constant battle between the two. And I'm very, I'm thankful that I personally haven't had, you know, the misfortune of, of unfortunately, in this society, because we're, we're, we're in it, um, I'm, I'm fortunate to not have to deal with the fact that a black man wasn't attracted to me to the point to where he felt as though I wasn't worthy of protection or, you know, proper treatment. But unfortunately, though, we do live in a system where, you know, your, your, your skin as a black person is not worthy of protection. So there has to be something to compensate over that. And as a woman now who needs that protection and who needs that structure, that male guidance or that male reinforcement, it's unfortunate that um, black women do have to go through that to get that type of something that should be warranted to them just because they are of that race, unfortunately. Um, so, you know, any chance I get, I honestly make sure that, especially with younger black males, um, that I show a positive reinforcement of a black female because a lot of the times they don't get that, whether it be through media or it just be in their home, they don't get that. And so they carry that wherever they go or they carry that this black woman is going to have an attitude or she's a hoe or she's this or she's that. And that's not everybody. Um, and as I've gotten older, I've become more conscious of things like that. Whereas with people that's older than me, I often hear them say, you know, where well, the elders didn't do this. And, you know, um, I didn't really understand why people looked towards the previous generation or why the previous generation felt it was their obligation when these are not your children. But I'm starting to understand now that when you are for your race, when you are, you know, understanding how self-preservation works and you want to be treated properly, if we're already being mistreated by everybody else, you want to be treated properly by your own kind, you have to do your due diligence to give that, um, especially to the younger people, because their minds are not fully. Um, and when I say younger, I'm talking about like mid-teens, um, late teens, stuff like that, like their minds are not fully, they, they still have the opportunity to be molded into thinking a, a positive about their race. They, they've seen all this negativity. So, you know, I just want to make it a, a positive uh, experience when I come around as a black woman um, for black males and even for black females, but I know for black men because they're the target, it's definitely something that I feel is, 
of due diligence for us as black women to set a positive reinforcing image if we can do that um but yeah so black men and black women's relationship in most cases if she's not an elderly black woman if she's still someone who is of a reproductive age um black men just don't really see it fit to to protect her unless she is either of his cloth cut from the same cloth meaning if he's in poverty she's in poverty that type of thing or if she's somebody who he wants to have sex with, but we just don't give credence to the fact that we're, we are of the same race and we should just respect each other based off of that. Because again, our race being what we are has never warranted us um, respect in this system. And it's sad. It's really sad. Hold on, Angel, my phone going out. Can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you. I had my, I had my uh, mic on mute. Oh, uh, okay. But I'm glad that you reached out to me um, to ask me to do this because... I know that you had your own thing going and I had my own thing going, but yeah, so it's really an unfortunate situation. Mm -hmm. It really is very unfortunate, but there's just no respect. Or you have black men who want to compete with black women because they themselves want to be a black woman. <laughs> so there's just all of these different ailments, mental ailments and emotional ailments that um happened but let me ask you a question what is the side effects of a black man having a poor relationship with his mother well i'll tell you this this kind of conversation i normally don't have i try to answer and be in the conversation i really i really don't you know if you if you ever watched uh, any of my videos, uh, that's a, you know relationships, black men, you know all that. I really don't. I don't do. I rather leave that. I mean, it's plenty other people that that deal with this topic. Well, no, that's the. I was surprised that you even reached out about this situation. So I thought that you were you know aware. But um, I mean, I, I give my I give my two cents. I mean, if it's okay. worth anything, you know, and plus I really don't hardly remember because. I, I'm, I'm mentally ill and feeble, and you I, reached out to me, Angel. I had one about my business, but go ahead. <laughs> you, know, you know, I can't really, I really can't get it together. But uh, join the conversation. The link is in the uh, description box if you want to uh, join the conversation. Uh, jot down your comments and your questions in the chat room, and we'll we'll deal with that. So uh, yeah, come join the conversation. I got a I got a video clip I want you to uh, listen to and give your take on that too. But I I try to give my two cents in on on uh, that. Matter of fact, I just lost what the hell I was talking about because I I wanted people to uh, to join the conversation if they want to. You know they uh, got the link there. Now what was it? What was it that you wanted me to talk about? Speak on. Well, no, I was saying what is your take? What is the uh? The side effects of a black man oh, not having yeah. a yeah. relationship with his yeah. mother. Yeah. Well, you see. The and when I said, wait a minute, wait a minute, Twin Pyramid, I didn't say broke as far as a person being broke financially. That's petty. When I said old and broken, meaning that a lot of black men are buck broken spiritually and they don't have a, if, if not, they, if they don't have a, um, a, a warrior spirit if that, that's just not in them if they want to pretend like they have a warrior spirit it's diluted with bullshit and pride and you ain't gonna get nowhere with that so when I said broke I wasn't talking about financially speaking but go ahead well I think that the modern day social media has exposed uh what uh, the consequences is 
because you have people like Tommy Sotomayor that exists, and you have this new person on the scene, this Cam Kevin Samuels person. And when I first came to YouTube, this back and forth between men and women, you know, began. Now, in the world that I come from, I never saw that. And the men that I'm around, I never, I never saw that. When I was growing up, I don't care what these women did to these men. I don't care what their mother was or whatever. You never yeah. heard, you never heard these brothers talk the way they do. All right. Never. I never heard that. I, I'm not. This whole, this whole mindset is foreign to me. You know, you you hurt by your mother, so you're gonna come to the internet, and now you hate women. And it's not only your mother; it's women in general. Uh, deity wouldn't get you know, wouldn't go out on a date with me, and I, I hate women. You know, you know that type of thing. Cause nobody, cause you 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 suffer from this low self esteem, and you want a date with deity, but you can't get a date. So you will uh, talk about her gender, which is a black woman, and then you know some raggedy white woman might give you opportunity. And then, look what I got! Look what I got! That's what they do here on social media. You know they can't. They have a problem with the black woman soul sister, and so what they do. They really don't want. I'm gonna tell you the truth. They really don't want these white women because you have you really have nothing in common. Right. You really don't. And she's not for you. That's just like right. a, that's like a canary trying to connect with a cockatoo. They both birds, but they don't have nothing in common. They're too different. They're different. We're not the same. So they're just trying to find a replacement and they're angry. Because if you satisfy with that Caucasian woman or whatever woman you got, you know, you go to Brazil or whatever you go, you know, back. They'd be happy with that. Why you gotta go get her? Then you wanna make videos or whatever and talk about I went to Brazil, uh, I got this white woman. Why are you doing that? Right. Because, you know, it's just like if you broke up with your boyfriend and he go find a girlfriend as fast as he can. He don't really give a damn who it is. He just wanna show you, I don't need you. Look what I got, look what I got. You know, it's the same, the same concept. So they come here and talk about what I got. If you don't like somebody, if you don't like her, why do you keep talking about her like that? It is because they want you. They want you. They like you. They want to be with you. But they don't know how. And then they talk about this uh, two-parent household crap. And if you was raised in a two-parent household, things would be better. How are things gonna be better if your father has the same mentality? Just because some of these men are married, Sister Deity, and I think we talked about this before, or maybe with Sister Noah. Just because people are married, don't mean they like the person they marry. They like there's men who don't like women. Period. They sneaking around being with men. They don't like women at all, but they putting on this front. There are men who are married that do not like their wife. There are men who are married. Who don't like their wife or children. They don't like both of them. But this is expected of you in this society. You know, your father and you know, many of your of us, you know, from the old school, you expect your children to be like you, you know, get married, have children, the white picket fence and the dog and things of that nature. Uh -huh. A lot of these men don't have feelings for their offspring. They don't have none. That's why it's easy for them to abandon their children. That's deep. They don't have any feelings for, for the baby. They have been conditioned just to be a breeder. You know, just find somebody to lay down, uh, show off. Look, I, I'm dating deity. Look how good she looks to, to your boy. And your boy be clapping, you know, they, they give themselves a thumbs up or whatever and, 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 and whatever. And that's what it's all about. You're just a breeder. That mentality, you know, I get tired of blaming certain things for our behavior. 
But that's the same thing that the slaves did. You know, he, right. wasn't, he wasn't responsible for no children. You know, the cracker took care of him and his wife and his children. He was just a breeder. Right. They get that male buck out there, and he breed with so many uh, females, he really don't know, you know, he don't know who got his children. You know, he just they just pass them around from female to female. Right. He's a breeder. The same thing they did to dogs. They do the same thing with dogs and cats. They, you know, breed a horse. Oh, that horse is a good runner. So they take that horse, and people pay for your horse to mate with their females. They did the same thing to us on the slave plantation. We carry these things with us. But my thing is, how long do we blame slavery? Well, see, let me ask you this. And see, I didn't mention slavery, but I'm glad that you brought that up as a point. But my thing is, I do believe that the effects of not having a positive female reinforcement, because black women are not off the hook. Yeah. Uh, I do believe that because we don't have a positive, uh, uh, some, in some cases, where there's not a positive female reinforcement, um, th there is a uh, there is a negative response that black men have. I'll give you an example. I have been doing an uh, unplanned research study, right? Mm -hmm. Where I've seen how black males, young black males, it, I, I never understood what the prison to pipeline thing meant. I nobody had ever explained that or maybe I just wasn't concerned enough to understand what it was because I saw school as a tool that could bring a person up if they knew how to utilize it right so yeah. when I heard school to prison pipeline I never thought that that I never really d delved in it to see what it actually meant or whatever I just felt like it was just some bullshit to be honest with you that people were just saying to 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 sound theoretical and you know <laughs> stuff like that I had no idea that it was a real thing until recently, right? So mm -hmm. I started seeing where these black, these young black males were uh, young black males in this one area that I had saw. This is not in my hometown. And I won't mm -hmm. say where I saw it just yet. But it was a group of young black males that was consistently hanging around McDonald's. And these young black males were from the ages of possibly 15 up until like 24, 25, right? Mm -hmm. And they were like homeless, destitute. And the older they were, so the ones who were like in their 20s, they were whatever drugs they were put on and whatever facility that they were put in, it had them talking to themselves, acting schizophrenic and bipolar. Now, if you see one person doing this, then you would think that there is something wrong with that one individual. But when you see that there is groups of people and then these groups of people all have a specific trait, which is their race. Mm -hmm. um, and then there are other traits. They were attractive. They were, they were black, attractive, and they were masculine acting boys. They were not effeminate at all, nor were they unattractive. They were what you would consider or what people would consider uh, racially productive, racially forward physically. They would be able to produce healthy black offsprings. Um, anyways, these, these young black males were attacked and one would think though well where is their mother because if there's a positive female or a strong female in their life that would not be happening usually you know there's this image that the black male wants to be you know um a rapper or he wants to pretend like he got this or got that these young black males they had no shame in asking people for money. Like you would think that's something that an older bum would do. And these young black males had no shame in asking people for money. Mm -hmm. Now they probably had some shame in asking me, but mm -hmm. they had no shame in just going around asking people for money like they were just bottom feeders. Whereas usually, again, in that age group, they want to act as though they got it. They are rich nigga, all this type of stuff, right? So when I saw that, I was taken aback and I started to think, you know, as time went on and I continued to see this situation, I was like, wow. So what happens, it has to be that these young black males get um, 
they get diagnosed with like ADHD or they get diagnosed with some type of uh, um, instability. And because they're black mothers who probably grew up in poverty, don't understand the system, they go along with what these teachers and these white folks are saying. And when I say white folks, when I'm talking about the system, I mean anybody that's working with the system to uh, diagnose a young black male who is clearly, that's not his problem. But a lot of the times, I don't care if the black mother is affluent. I don't care if the black mother is not affluent. Uh, what I've noticed is that black people tend to believe the system over their common nurturing, mothering self and sense. And so you let these white folks take control of your kids, say that they got ADHD, put, treat them like they're retarded. And then you lose or they lose, uh, they have a disinterest in school. They no longer want to be in an environment that's dumbing them down, making them feel unworthy or unwelcomed. Mm -hmm. So they drop out. And then because they don't understand themselves, they start to tell themselves and tell other people they got ADHD, they bipolar. And so now these young black males moving around like they crazy and it ain't nothing wrong with them. Mm -hmm. It's all by design. You call yourself crazy long enough, you will start thinking that you crazy. Mm -hmm. You call yourself mentally ill long enough, you will start to believe that you mentally ill and that you bipolar and you got ADHD. You start to act in manners in which you claim. Then on top of that, I remember you said something on a previous live. You said that the white lady told you they was going to give you shots. Mm -hmm. Do you know that these shots be making people talk to themselves? These yes. people that you see on the street talk to themselves and, you know, talking about their schizophrenic. It's because they them drugs they're receiving. Yeah. And so the most hurtful thing is when you see that this stuff is happening to young black males at a at a specific age and then there is no black female reinforcement that is around that 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 protects because the mother i mean unfortunately as you stated the father become breeders but the mother is the one that's carrying the child and not to say that all of the onus should be on her as far as the protection but i mean if you're going to deal with a deadbeat nigga then and you don't nobody's saying to have an abortion, but if that's not your, your route, then you're going to have to make sure that you protect that child. And there's no way possible. Like I literally, I've seen some of these young black males hungry and I fed them and I'm like, yo, get whatever you want to get. Cause ain't no way I'm not even a mother and I'm close to some of their age and some of I'm actually some of their age, but there's no way that I'm going to sit around and, and, and see, like, let me tell you something. When you see stuff like that as a black person, what you see is a person who is, uh, they are as as a person. I'm I'm into my race on a um on a level of way past just oh I like how blackness looks. Well, I'm way beyond that. I'm way beyond the vanity. I'm way beyond the emotional stroking. I'm way beyond that. I understand what it is to be about self-preservation. So when I see these young black males, if they ask me for something to eat, I don't give a fuck if they are old enough to get a job. I understand what's going on. So the natural part of me as a person who is for self-preservation, I'm going to want to make sure that they're fed. My yeah. nurturing sense, if not my mothering sense, but my nurturing self is going to kick in and I'm going to make sure that to some degree from what I can offer, that there's a level of protection. And I want them to know that there is a positive, and that's what I was speaking on earlier, but I wasn't getting into detail. I want them to see that there is a positive black female reinforcement and that changes some of them. And then they started coming around in that area wanting to get a job when they saw me. They started wanting to apply for jobs there. And then not only that, what I found very interesting was how when I would help one, how the other one would get somewhat jealous or they would somewhat want my attention. And it was not on an intimate girlfriend, boyfriend level. That came from the fact that their mother did not offer positive um, attention and affection to these young black males. Can I say and something? That Who is this? Oh, just 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 hold 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 your point. Let let Sister Deity finish her point. Okay. And so they did not offer positive reinforcement to these young black males. And so, um, you know, there's different aspects to how these types of circumstances come about. 
But we can't act like black women don't play a part in some of this. Like we we cannot act like that is not, you know, a factor. I mean, you know, you go into certain places where there's black women, and and, and uh, rightfully so because black women have been degraded so bad and have been mistreated so bad, they do carry a chip on their shoulder even for no like for no reason. Yeah. You go to these apart you go to these apartment complexes and all you all you see if you if you try to get an apartment in certain places these black women at the counter or at the desk and they're some of them they're, they're so nasty and they got such an attitude and it's almost like you start to think are these people is this a role that they're playing because it's so consistent mm. you know you start to think is this is this a are they told to act this way for a specific reason but then when you go and you read the comments and you see that these women have given multiple people that come in there, specifically other black people and particularly other black women, they have a nasty attitude towards these black people. Now, a lot of the times that comes from a place of them being hurt and mistreated, um, them being dogged out by dealing with deadbeat men, men who don't treat them right. And so now you have an attitude problem. You got a chip on your shoulder and then you have these children that you are not able to properly love and nurture the right way. Mm -hmm. And then you you can't take care of them properly. Now, I'm not talking about the anomalic situations where, you know, regardless of how good the mother is, the child turns out to be what they're going to be. I'm not talking about those situations. But I just wanted to talk on this particular subject and, and this particular type of behavior, because what I started to see was very was very disturbing to me, again, where these black these black males were just just given over to the streets. And mm-hmm. a lot of the times, the stuff that they were doing, it was because they want attention. They want a female's attention, not on no sexual shit. And this is how nasty some of these hoes are. Let me say, let me say this. You have older black women who they themselves have been um, starved out of attention and they'll take advantage of black men that's down and out on a sexual level and pretty much do for them. But there's something because we don't talk, we talk about men taking advantage of young women, but Uh we don't talk about how some of these women will take advantage of some of these broken young black males. And Uh there's a sexual thing that's attached to them helping some of these young black men. So when you have a genuine heart for your race, for the progression of your race, I don't got to know him personally. But when you, when you innately understand that part, a part of him is a part of you, just on a on a genuine on a on a real level, like, and that's not something that a person can teach you. That's not something that you can read in a book. That's something that you got to be tapped into. <clears throat> and so when you understand that, you don't look at it like, okay, I'm gonna help you, but there's 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 a catch to it, and that is shocking to a lot of them. You know what I'm saying? Again, we talk about how these men would take advantage of these these black females who you know, but we don't talk about the other end that often. We don't talk about that a lot. You know what I'm saying? And and my thing is, to be honest with you, it's not a lot of black women that I could talk to on a rational level with a weave in her head anyway. If your hair is relaxed and you got a weave, I don't care what nobody say. Oh, it, that has nothing to do with anything. That has a lot to do with a lot. Mm-hmm. The very minuscule things have a lot to do with a lot. Because how you see yourself and how you treat yourself is how you're going to treat somebody else. You can't tell me nothing righteous when you ain't doing and living that way. If you ain't treating yourself that way. So, yes, um, you know, the effects of, of, a, of a negative black female reinforcement, that can be that can be very detrimental. And like you said, Angel, to your to your point, it does stem from a slave way of being. Mm. You know, you hate if you hate certain things about yourself, anything that's reflective of you, even if these people are not related to you, you're going to have that same hatred towards them. So just imagine if that same being came from your body, how nasty you will treat that child. Mm. Wow. Well, I tell you, uh, and that's part of the, I don't talk about it because, you know, it's a lot of things. I really don't talk about it, but this conversation is part of uh, what we call the Mississippi campaign because in order for us, I mean, to take control of a state, that's really the easy part to maintain that state as a whole different ball game. And we have to have a, a whole different type of mindset and, this issue between black men and women, this issue of even our humanity, it has to be dealt with. You got to talk about this. There's no doubt about yeah. it. So this is a power. You know, our, our, uh, I talked about it a little bit, but 
you know, our condition, you know, our, you know, I don't like to see brothers like that. Uh, Sister Nova is probably one of the most charitable people I ever been around. She can't help, you know, when there's people on the street and they might want to use your money, you know, for crack cocaine, who knows? But she can't help. She wants to give to, you know, to our people out there. She can't help it. She wants Let me to tell you something. And be, I'm going to pass the mic to the other person. So I, I I've I've given to this to this person and I saw that they got fooled with it. There, there was no doubt about that. They got there for and that literally at first when this person asked me the first time around, I was like, yo, I'm busy, leave me alone, right? And then it was a consistent thing and I and, and they tried to hide whenever they would see me, they would try to hide that, right? And so it was just one day while they thought that I was busy where I saw what they were doing and they went and took two, this other, this older guy gave this person, this young black male, $2 and he went and got some food with it and that like literally crushed me. But it was another black guy who, you know, that I was saying, you know, the ones who are in their mid twenties, early twenties, 24, whatever, who done got so sprung out and strung out where I spoke to him and um, I pretty much, just told him like because i mean when i say he's beautiful like his skin is very dark uh -huh. and let me tell you something this is what i noticed they got some light-skinned black males out there burned out but uh, their target is like the darkest it's like the darker ones are always the main targets right uh -huh. and the reason why is because the darker the person's skin the more powerful you are this is the reason why they make you hate these very same things about yourself. And it is it it's it's almost um, it's exacerbated. The hatred is exacerbated because it's your own people that do it. Right. So yeah. now you start to feel as though the hatred is it has to be that there's something wrong with you. It can't be that there's just a, a racist person involved because it's now they, your own kind have been taught to hate that very same thing. So you start to believe that that hatred is validated or it's valid. Right. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, this part, like these people thought they look like gods. Like when I say gods, I'm talking about, they look like ancient, like sculptures. And it's these particular black males, yo, it's so crazy that it's the beautiful, it's the beautiful black sculpted, like these these Adonis looking black men that they got out here burnt out. These effeminate black males are not strung out like that. They're, they So they break you down in one way or the other. And my thing is, there's no way that I would allow myself to have that much hatred towards a person of my race to where I couldn't even want to feed them or I wouldn't even want to talk to them, especially when they young like there's no way and I see older blacks who have been indoctrinated to look down on their own especially in certain parts of the world you will see black people start to take on ways and mannerisms of white folks I had never seen certain things until I had went to Georgia as far as um when it comes to uh how blacks treat other blacks so like for instance you know you have black people that are looking at other black people in disgust or in disdain and that's how white folks look at them. And so they'll they'll pick up those same mannerisms. And it's usually older blacks. And I, and I'd be like, what the fuck is wrong with these people? But you will never see me turn my nose up to no young black person who strung out or sprung out like that. Because I know exactly now, I know more than ever where it comes from. It is intentional. And for those of us that are not caught up in the system, we need to thank our lucky stars because it's one way or another that these people want to try to get you trapped, get you caught up or get you broken in some kind of way. And so when I, when I was talking to this young black man, I was like, you beautiful. Like, why are you, why, why are you out here like this? Like, where are your parents? Like you young for one. And then you, it just, it's so crazy. Like, but anyway, so the next day, you know, he had some pep in his step. He won, you know, scraggling around. And like I said, the other ones wanted to get a job and the other ones wanted to, you know, act like they, they didn't want to just be lurking around bumming no more because when they see somebody in their age group that is a reflection of something positive, because that's all they really need is somebody that's a reflection of positivity that they can relate to, it'll make them snap out of that craziness. And this is the reason why these the, the system has it to where these particular black folks are in the hood so that they cannot get out and see positive black reinforcement. And the bit of positive black reinforcement that they do see, these black people, they'll turn their back or turn their nose up because they themselves fear being in that position. Because let me tell you something, 
most working class black people, I don't care where where you work. If you how much you make, a hundred thousand, ten thousand a year, I don't care how much you make. Most black people, they work what they owe. Meaning that if you work a hundred thousand dollars, you got probably two thousand, three thousand dollars worth of debt. And if not just that, you're living probably beyond your means. So mm -hmm. you're but a paycheck probably away from being where those other blacks are. And the reason why black people can be so nasty and negative towards black people that's at the bottom like that, because they see themselves being there and they resent that they are almost there. They resent and they fear that they're a check away from that. So they feel like if they get too close to that, that too can be them. And they'll try their best to, to, to lie to themselves that they're better than this, but you are you a check or you a broken heart away from being where these people are. And when but when you understand the system and how it's played against you, when you understand that, you don't put yourself, you don't, you, you just don't look down on your own people like you, 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 you know the truth and you are not caught up in that matrix. So you don't see it as like, you know, if I'm nice to these people, if I talk to these people, that people are gonna assume that I'm this or it's just it's crazy. Man, oh man, you said a mouthful. Uh, we're going to go ahead and pass the mic to our uh, guest here, Tasha. Tasha, welcome to the Reality Temple on Earth. What you got to say? Hmm. I don't even know if I should say anything mm -hmm. because I feel like I want to go in and go in deep and go in bad. Um, <laughs> what are you, by the way, I, I'm, you know, should, can I call you Temple? Should I? What should I call you, by the way? Angel. You can call me Angel. Okay, Angel. Thank you. You're welcome. This is all around a mess. It's a disturbing, despicable mess. Mm -hmm. I'm not. I wouldn't dare compare, considering what it is that I know, the suffrage of these black males compared to the suffrage of the black females, starting in the household, the neighborhood, the block. See. Everybody's getting at work. In fact, I'm willing to say that a lot of these females get it the worst. A lot of what black women suffer from is PTSD, the number one rape woman in America, beat, kidnapped, murdered, okay, human traffic. She's number one for all of that. There's nothing done to counteract that at all. Um, even down to their look, the perms, the bundles, the weaves, my God, I wear my natural. I'm insulted on a regular basis by mm -hmm. black people, by black people. No one else would dare say a thing to me by black people themselves. So um, I had to persevere the people to get to who and what I was. I had to, um, I had to, you know, put them in their proper place in order to get to me. Okay, so we're, we're, we're going to sit here. I, I can sit up and, and, and explain, but I won't. The, the layout and the booby trap of what happens to these young girls in the households by their mothers, what the black mother does to her daughter, compared to what she does to her son, put them out, set them up for a life of tyranny and pain, set her daughter up to make an early mistake, usually a baby. Yeah, that happens happens more often, you know. There's always somebody I find willing to help the black man and they so they promote his struggles, his pain, okay? But not that of the innocent black girl. So I can understand their energy and attitude that may come across negative considering the people are, dare I say, pro-black male. Pro-black male. We've seen it in front of the world, you know. George Floyd versus what, what's her name, Breonna Taylor. So mm -hmm. uh, all of this is uh, indeed repulsive and despicable. It's an embarrassment, and the universe is going to handle all of this accordingly. That's what's all. That's what's going to happen, whether we like it or not. We've had enough time to get our act together. It has not happened. Everybody wants to see what they want to see, but all of it is being handled, as we can clearly see. So go ahead, uh, Angel. Were you going to say something? Or ask me something. No, I mean, I mean, go ahead. Well, and go. I'll go ahead. I mean, this, this, yeah, this. I'll go ahead. And, yeah. So let me. Yeah. No, ahead. that's not me. This is DT talking right now. So let me, let me, let me say, let me say this to that. Um, one of the things that I find very problematic is uh, 
not speaking on you in particular, but I, I, I find I find it very problematic when black women hold white women talking points. Um, I'm not a feminist, <laughs> nor am I against black men, or am I pro I'm black women? I'm not talking about project. you. Let me finish. Hold on. Let me finish. Damn, let okay. me finish. I said I want to talk about you. That's the reason okay. why I laid it out because I know because I know how some of y'all get. Okay, so relax. So what I was saying was. I'm not talking. I, I know that some, some, some of these, some of these um, black women who hold these white women talking points, they tend to uh, again separate themselves from black men, and rightfully so. If you've experienced certain things that will make you feel that way, like I had addressed earlier where I said that some of these black women go into these organizations and then get dogged out by these black men, and then they start to uh, you know, take it out on black men and how black men, uh, based on the types of women that they find attractive, those are the ones who they choose to protect. I did say that. Like, so people can't act like I didn't, you know, speak on that. Um, but the problem is not so much just that. We can't just harp on that. The problem is, is that a lot of these black women who do make these complaints put themselves in negative situations and, and circumstances and not in all cases. I'm, and, and I'll get to each one. I'll break each one down. But in some cases, put themselves in negative situations with these types of men. And then now you start to take this out on multiple different types of men. You have black women who treat their daughters like shit. You have black women that treat other black women like shit. We can't act like that doesn't happen. You should have enough common that. sense. I didn't say you. I'm saying in general, again, I'm not talking about you. And this is the reason why I do have to specify because, uh, okay. So what I'm saying is, is that th this happens where black women treat other black women like shit. There's no excuse for the reason why the black woman at the call center or at the front desk of any office should treat her own kind nasty. Nor is it an excuse for a black man to do it. So uh, just because you've been ridiculed, black women, for your hair or you've been ridiculed for, for someone else's ignorance does not mean that you have to perpetuate that same ignorance because you, too, have now become a part of the problem. OK, like so. So the, the, the thing is, is that that I don't know who gets, you know, help more. I can't I haven't surveyed who gets help more, whether it's the black Angel? male or the black. Angel. What? Yes. Angel, may I please interject or no? No, let me finish. Uh, go ahead. Let, is, let her finish yeah. her point and then you can have it okay. and nobody will interrupt you. Yeah, because I mean, mm -hmm. I wasn't interrupting. So, so my thing is, it doesn't matter who, you know, I, I haven't done a survey as to who got more help over which one. I'm not a feminist and I'm not a homosexual, nor do I have a problem attracting black men. So I don't have a problem oh with God. black men. I don't have a problem with black women because I am a black woman. So I'm not going to sit here and put myself against another person in my race. If you want to do that as a white supremacist talking point, then you could go over there with David Duke and them. And I'm pretty sure they'll like to not only fuck you, rape you and use you against your own people, uh -huh. but uh, they'll do whatever it is they got to do. My thing is, is that we have to be honest about the fact that yes, there are black men that are against black women for their own insecurities, but there are a lot of black women that also perpetuate not only the hatred that they have towards black men and their own sons, but also towards other black women and their daughters. I've seen black women, particularly dark skinned black women who complain about colorism and these same black women perpetuate the same colorist things that they themselves went through, they perpetuated onto other black women or black people this is a fact you know like the mother does have a very big part of control in her son's life or her children's life period you know in most cases and so again um the arrogance or the highfalutin want to be highfalutin mindset of i can't the, the black man or the black woman like that's crazy we have to be able to point out the pitfalls on both ends of one race that's just what it is. And if you want to be a detriment to that, or if you want to further perpetuate that sickness, then you need to go somewhere else and not on my topic. <laughs> okay, Mr. Angel. Um, I, I love your platform. I've been here for many years. Um, Thank you. I, 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 it's, it's fascinating. It's, it's, 
it's disturbing. But uh, universal karma is here. So um, I'll just leave with that. You know, the suffrage, uh, we ain't seen nothing yet. And it is righteous and just do. So thank you very much, uh, Mr. Angel, for having me on. Take care. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Yes. Absolutely. And so my thing is, when you can't stand in the paint to the truth, you got to go. You got to bounce. And this is a problem with a lot of black women like that. Instead of taking accountability and talking about problems or fixing problems, they bounce. Just like they leave their young black sons out here for the streets to eat them up. They bounce. They're these a lot. Let's let's just be very clear. A lot of black women cannot stand in the paint when somebody calls them out for their bullshit. Because yes, while you may have been hurt, they start to project that same negative behavior to the same to, to people who've done nothing to them, and that's a problem. We need to be able to call that out. We we call out black men, and we should be able to do that too. But we got to call out everybody, and that's just what it is. And no, the views that are expressed are not his views. They're <laughs> they're <laughs> my views. But let's just be very clear. There, there's there's an issue where you got these these uh these on the titty ass men who want to sit here and coddle women who ain't shit and not call them out. You know, and then on the other end, you got these women haters who want to bash them. So the 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 titty coddling men, they they make it to where these women cannot take any type of interjection to their behavior or any type of ridicule or not even ridicule per se, but any type of commentary that's going to, you know, check their behavior in a positive manner. Right. But then you got the bashing, the male bash, the, the, the female bashers. Who they go so hard to where and make it look like these men who steal on these women's titties, like they're like they have a reason to protect bullshit women. And that's a problem. These niggas don't know how to differentiate an argumentative female from a passionate female. They are just as sick as these women who raised them. There's a difference. You know what I'm saying? Being an argumentative black woman, being a pacifying black woman to 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 bullshit does not make you strong, does not make you, you know, our perceptions of, of ourselves in a righteous manner as black people is skewed badly. Wow. So my thing is, at the end of the day, um, you know, you come on here with your white woman talking points. Because I could tell it's in a person's spirit when they sound so a certain way. I know where she's coming from. Excuse me. Hold on, let me, me say this. So, excuse me. So you, you are you excuse, talking but you jumped out. You jumped out. You jumped out. I'm talking to you now. Do I know yes, you? I'm to so you I had to come back. Because when I left, that's when you really started talking. So you're, you are talking to me, correct? You are talking to me and about me, right? You heard oh. what I said. Now you oh, go ahead and you so make you your were. response. So all of that, oh, I'm not talking to you. You're, you're, the games that you're playing, see, I left like a lady because I don't want to engage with another supposed black woman in that manner. But of course, you don't understand the concept of having you're not dignity. A black woman. So therefore, you're, not a you're, black thinking, woman. You're, doing, you're doing what you're claiming everyone else does, such as the racist or even ignorant black women or ignorant black you're men. You're not a black woman. I didn't even engage with you. Excuse me. I didn't even engage with you. I didn't even get a chance to really engage with you. I, see, I, I heard what you were. I knew what you were doing. So I exited stage left. And that's your time to shine, Big Mama. I'm not that one. Trust me. I'm not that one. All right, so check this out. When you did all your little laughing and all of what you were doing, come on, listen. I, I don't play a little I white. Laugh. Listen, I hold up. I don't I play. I don't laugh. play. I, I don't laugh. play you white women games with a black woman. I don't play white women, women games with a black woman. You're a problem. You are the same women that you talk about. You are the same women that you talk about. You are. Everybody just talking at least. At least any high functioning, high intelligent person, you are exactly who you're talking about. But like you're I said, problem. but like I said, but like I said, I didn't use any profanity. I didn't come at you any kind of way. I addressed the talking points, and you can't even you do that. You can't even no, you do didn't that, come at me. Mama. Big mama, you you're big, yes, you're yes. domineering. You're big, you're masculine, and domineering, and there's no justification for that, big mama. I'm not that you one. I what you want, but you're going to show respect, though. 
So you know who's the big mama, okay? You know who's the big mama, okay? So stay in your place, little mama. A backwards little mama. The ones who need to respect you, because I don't hear anything worth respecting. I didn't disrespect you, Big Mama, but it's just what you come from. You're used to being Stand domineering and castrating. You're used to being domineering and castrating. You are. You. You're just like them. You're just like you're them. It's the same. It's the same. You're now you're, you're erratic. Up. Now you want to switch it up because I'm got with your ass. Oh, you are okay. emotional and erratic. You just, just like the rest of these white. Me. You have embodied black male and black woman dysfunction. You have embodied the black male and the black woman's dysfunction. You are it, big mama. You are it. You are it, girl. There's nothing righteous, clean, or honorable about you. You have no right to speak. No right at all. And the, orderly, and the orderly functional black men and black women need to get you together and your kind. And it's going to happen universally so you are the problem it's your psychosis you're not the answer big mama and that's the problem with with those like you you think you're the answer huh you think you're doing something because you don't fed somebody and gave them two dollars it's far more deeper and bigger than that big girl it's way more bigger and deeper than that you understand oh okay so, anyway. so are you done cooning are you done being a coon are you done being a mammy coon? Now, look, look, magically, everybody, uh, magically, everyone, I'm a coon. Are you done being a coon? Magically, no one has oh, heard no, my real talking points. No one has really addressed, has not heard me. I, th do you hear what I'm dealing with? Do you hear yeah. what, the, what anyone is dealing with? That And now she's like this on the internet with a woman she doesn't know. What is she doing in everyday society? Delusion. Are you done it's being a coon? You are the problem. And then when it comes down to the problematic individuals who have kept us back, it, it's you and your kind and your tribe. It's you. It's you. You're an argumentative it's black you. hood rat. You're trying to do what the black woman does with the church, with the You're black woman. You're an argumentative black woman. You're trying to throw everybody off from knowing your wicked, evil deeds, big girl. You're trying you're to an throw argumentative. Everybody. You're an argumentative black trash. Anybody no, knows no, with no, any no. amount of intelligence, you bully the people. You bully the people. Now, bully me. Bully me. Bully me. Listen. Then white you're women are not to you want to be a white woman. You are good to no one. And the thing is, the, in the weakened mental and spiritual state of the black man, they'll fall for your bullshit. I'm not. They'll fall for it. They'll fall for uh, it. You haven't talked on the you topic, work, well, you, you women like you, you work the black men's mental over just like the slave master. It has never changed. It just changed form. You women, women like yourself, manipulative, wicked, de deceitful women like yourself with alternative motives that are very obvious, you work the black man's brain like putty. And what they are right now, you love it. You love it because you think that somehow, some way, you're going to fucking persevere and sh outshine them. You want to seem like you're outshining them and you're the... And you're the you're, yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah, that's You want to be thought. a white woman so bad. I you are such a cool... Me. You hate yourself. You want to be a white I'm woman so bad. Anyone to anyone that that that, that hears her hears her calling me a coon, I'm not co-signing yeah, white supremacy. I'm uh, not co-signing anything. Uh, so once okay. again, go ahead, we, go ahead, Angel. Yeah, can, uh, look, we're gonna we need to slow this down here. Please I wanna do. control I wanna, her. I want to. I'm not gonna try to control her. You, she I needs say, to be controlled. I want to say this to 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 you, deity. Just because somebody don't view the world the way you do, don't make them a coon. No, this lady was sitting here going off on me, and you think I won't say anything back? I did back. not go off on you. you when I went back to listen to the show, you were talking about me. So do not sit here and lie. Do not sit here and lie. You're a liar. Everyone heard it. when, And that's right. when I came back, because I was going to go back just to listen once I heard what he had up here. And it's no disrespect to Mr. Angel. I've been here for years. You're trying to grandstand. Go ahead and grandstand. Go ahead. Again, Mammy. Listen. Oh, now I'm a if we can't, so like, if we can't, you can't hold a conversation on the topic. 
Listen, hold on, wait, wait, wait. Let's that's, that's dissect this. So when the term mammy is used to a black woman, that means that she's coddling and excusing unexcusable black male behavior, right? So now I'm no, a mammy. that's not what a mammy is. No, but that's not what a mammy is. is. Your talking points were aligned with you my young be white woman are aligned with being a mammy. People may listen no, to you. And you you want to be white woman who hates who you are. You hate your natural hair. You hate who you are. You are from calling me a coon to calling me a mammy. All those, all those words, coon, mammy, all those are white supremacists That's talking the best you can do. That's the best no, can do. First of all, we can call it what we want to call it. However, the, 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 the hold on, hold on, magically, hold on, everybody. So magically, Listen, are you gonna hold the conversation no, no, about no, no, the topic no, no, or what? No, 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 no. I'm not out here raping and pillaging. I'm not out here destroying black people. I'm not out here sabotaging black success. I'm not out here putting anyone down. But magically, uh, Angela, are you gonna I control the topic or what? I disagree because I didn't even get a chance to disagree. I just simply spoke my talking points. Nothing less, nothing more. But she thinks that I disagree with her. And this is what you're she does. Argue, you're a weak argumentative black woman. She's okay, mad look, that she can't right. bully me. She's it's mad that I miss her and I see her for what she is and she cannot bully me. That's so now oh, it's all a name calling. Okay. Yeah. I, I mean, you're a weak black woman. I mean, come on. Yeah, you, so, do a lot of, so, you do a lot so of man calling. I make That's black look good. I make black look good. I don't act any kind of way because no, I'm a black don't. woman. No, you I make don't. It You're a divisive hood rat. Listen, Angel, either we're going to hold a dialogue about the topic or, or I mean, she's going to keep bashing kind of me. Sweetie, I didn't bash you. That's your own insecurities talking. I didn't That's do anything. That's what you've been doing since you got back talking about me and saying, yeah, 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 yeah. But, you know, but, but pumping your okay, stomach out. This. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not going to argue I with a foolish. Right back. I'm not going to argue I'm with a consistent. That's what I did. Come on, Think. come on. This is a contentious argument. Go ahead, Angela. You're the problem. You are the best example of what is wrong because y'all talk one way and then the real you comes out uh, towards your people because you ain't doing this to Becky or motherfucking Samantha or goddamn Billy Bob or any of them. You preserve and reserve that wicked energy for other black people. You, right. baby girl, are the right. problem and you know you are. You ain't throwing nobody <laughs> off with your talking points and your fake concern. You are the problem. Sister Tasha. Okay, dear Sister Tasha, let's take a break and, and uh, Let's cool this whole down, this thing down here. Let's take a, uh, a few minutes. I want to play this video by this brother here, and because I really would like to get everybody's comment on what this uh, sure. this brother is talking about. That that'll, that'll give Absolutely. us a, that'll give us a little time to cool down and and, and jump. <laughs> off well, listen, Angel, I'm cool. I'm not a contentious black woman. I'm not going to argue with there this thing. Go, there you go. She she stop starting. She's doing it again. This is. Yeah, I mean, problem. I just diagnosed you. It's okay. okay. You're so weak. Okay. And you're such a okay. contentious woman. You say, right. Go ahead, no, no, Angel. Angel. Play the video, Angel. Okay, That's let's, what let's, I thought. Let's, let's chill out. Way. Let's chill out and then try to get ourselves together here. Let me, uh, now, this 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 uh, fella <laughs> here, uh, I, I want to see what y'all think about him. Let me play the video. Oh, boy. Not nature, boy. Yeah. Oh my God. Because ain't no CEOs going to work with police. Ain't gonna, it's going to be chaos. And niggas going to pop and change. You won't get out that jail. I guarantee you. You're going to go right out. I, I can't. Whose phone is ringing like that? I can't. I mean, I don't know. Nature Boy is crazy. Why we? What's, what Nature Boy got to do with this? Nature Boy, and unfortunately, in case you don't know, reflects the mentality of your, a lot of black males, unfortunately. A lot no, of the women, the, a lot of the wives, a lot of black males, a lot of the wives that you're he a has, problematic, self hating black lot, once woman. Once again, she why won't she, why is she afraid to let me talk? I'm breaking it down to her. Why is that you're man a being a you're a problem? Because unfortunately, his mentality is common, just like the wives that he has and the women that support him and the people that support him. He has a huge following, so therefore, his mentality reigns supreme with a lot of people, a lot of black people, boo boo, whether you like it or not. So, yeah.
Yeah, you should study a nature boy and look at nature. You are such a bottom feeder. Get That's to the point and talk like you a normal person. Names, You're a bottom you feeder. Names, you can't hold, can you cannot them. hold Girl, articulate I mean, I dialogue. When I close my eyes and hear you, I hear that waistline. So it's okay. I win. I, I know. Now, I, I can't. I can't back to the topic because this woman is a bottom feeder and can't hold yeah, the logical conversation. Anyway, let me. Let's, I've been Angel, here for either, years. You better control the Mr. situation Angel, so that we can talk. On your platform. Why does this woman keep calling me names that are unwarranted? I'm. I'm. Do you tell me to have a choice? But to just end this, because I can't, I can't do it. I, I mean, well, then you don't have to do what you have to do because you're not being able to control the situation so I'm that we can both talk. Problem. I'm not the problem. I, I mean, you. This is your platform. platform, so you have to be well, able. I, I know you. Go. I can go like I did before, but please do not say anything about me. Be a the woman. Be a lady. Because you're not talking about so anything. What, once again, so what, how am I? about anything this is not your platform this is mr angel so either you're going I've to control the, the situation beginning. this guy i've been crazy. with him since the beginning you should not do this on this black miss man's platform now if you want to do it on your platform i'm ready but don't do this on this man's platform angel are you going to control the situation or what oh yeah you need to control yourself well yeah so uh Okay, deity left. Okay. Deity left. Mr. Mr. Angel, I do apologize. I apologize for myself and her. I apologize for us both. I, I tried to get out of here <laughs> uh, when I felt what I felt, what I knew, what I knew. Um, and then I, I heard something and I'm just like, well, what is all of that for? So I came back, but I've always loved your platform and your content. Um, I do apologize. I, I, I'll go back to listen, Mr. Angel. I will. I really will. But I thank you so much for at least trying to have us on. I do apologize for that behavior. Uh, okay, let me get it. Hold on. Uh, Sister Nova's going to join us. Uh, okay. What are y'all talking about? I'm sorry. <laughs> the issues between black women and men. That was the topic. And we was uh we was we was gonna. Well, they can hear you because you're on the speakerphone. I'm sorry, that's too much for me to deal with right now. And so you can, I, uh, I got, I got, I got some opinions, but I, I think I'm going to keep my opinions to myself until later on. I, I just, I will talk about it later on. I, I'm, I'm going to talk about it later on, okay? Okay. I, I don't know if I'm going to get in this live chat tonight. I'm like, oh, yeah. Well, well, well Deity, Deity <laughs> dropped off. You know, she yeah, she dropped off. I, I mean, you here now. I mean, you're on speakerphone. So, I mean, you, yeah. Let me see. Uh, oh, shit, I, it won't. You know what? I just I just stay on the speakerphone. Yes. Just, okay. I just stay on the speakerphone. Yeah. Yeah. I'm good. I, I'm good. I'm good. Okay. Y'all continue. Continue. Well, uh, you know, this is. I don't. I'm not going to be biased. I'm not going to be prejudiced one against another. But, you know, when you're wrong, you're wrong, and it was wrong for deity, and she do it all the time. You know, because you disagree or make a point that she don't like, you're cool and you. It goes back to our conversation that we had early on my live stream uh, from two thirty. Uh. We fill our minds with these blackity black black type conscious type teachings, and they and for some people can handle it, and some people it scrambles their minds. It, it causes them to really they don't think they don't think properly. And they do not like anybody who think differently from them. They, this woman is going to talk about how much she loves us as a people, but she's going to call her sister out of her name. The first one. That sister made her uh, was talking, and she was wise enough to say, uh, you know, this, this ain't somebody I really want to conversate with. She can tell, you know, the, 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 the mentality. And she decided to gracefully leave the program. But as she exited, that's when Deity went on the war path. Oh my God. And the sister heard it, and she's not going to be no punk. She ain't punking me out. So she came oh back. My God. Oh my God. <laughs> and the sister can show you I can get down just like you can. Yeah, yeah. And see, that's my problem. You got these people that come to me. Angel, you a, a, a coon. And Angel, you this and that. 
and, and, and call me name. So I come back and I fire back. Then they start buckling down because they can dish it out, but can't take it. I didn't call you no damn name. But you gonna call me a cool. And then, oh, you got white woman. That was the first thing she said. You have white woman uh, talking points. Talking what the hell do you mean by that? Um, but you call somebody a coon and you call somebody white woman's talking point and you the best, you know, you the best tool for white supremacy or whatever garbage that oh you just come, you know, that, that's coming out your mouth. Those are white, oh those are white supremacists talking points. Mm -hmm. So like they were saying in the chat room, you contradicting yourself with this blackity black stuff. Brother Omar mm -hmm. said, if you so blackity black like that, then you need to take an oath not to drive a car. You don't mm. drive a car until black people produce that car. Mm. Are you willing to do that, Miss Blackity Black? Oh, no, my goodness. Are you willing, matter of fact, matter of fact, are you willing not to even spend any money? Because that's the white man face on your dollar bill. Yep. You go to the white man's bank. Mm -hmm. You can't even get a drink of water without him, Miss Blackness. But you so blackity black. The sister didn't do anything wrong. She gracefully bowed out because she would know who she was dealing with. This is what I deal with her all the time. I've been dealing with, with this young lady for two, three years. Sister no sister Nova knows that. Yeah, yeah. I see. Yeah. And and and, and uh, but I like her. She keeps coming back and she wants to talk. I'm not going to deny, you know, I, I understand her now. Uh, and she's, she used to be worse, if you believe it or oh not. <laughs> Tasha, Tasha, she used to be worse. I can't believe, oh my goodness. Oh my <laughs> I, don't know if you, I don't know if you can imagine that or not. But she, oh my goodness. And the, now look, and this is the thing about it. Some people may, and the sister is, I mean, she got that fire, but it's oh negative. Goodness. It's negative fire. I see. It's yellow fire. Anybody? I, I, I already it. Yeah. Anybody <laughs> that deal with fire know that that fire has to burn blue. Uh, if the fire is yellow and black, it's toxic. Yeah. She's fiery, but she's toxic yeah. because she tell you that I love you, and she talk about how bad I talk about black people. You don't hear me calling black people coons and sambos. And all these other different things. What I do is I remind you or I show you that you call yourself these names, gods and kings and queens and all this stuff. That's not what you are. You have not proven that. You taking you want me to give you credit for something that you have not earned. And you don't want to accept the fact that you're a loser. And we are losers. We have not won this fight. Marcus Garvey did not win the fight. Dr. Mm. King didn't win the fight. So now the ball has passed in our hands. What are we going to do different? You know, you're doing the same kind of stuff they did in the, in the 60s, talking about each other. Malcolm X is guilty, and I love Malcolm. He was running around calling people coons and sambos too. He did. Yeah. And everybody was all divided. But you know this. Dr. King never called him a bad name. All these people called uh, Dr. King all these names. You never heard Dr. King slam at, at Malcolm or the Black Panthers or anybody that was talking bad about him. He never did. Mm -hmm. So who's the big man? Dr. King is the big man because Dr. King showed that he really loved us. Not only is he showing, you could call him a sellout because he showed all this love for the white folks or whatever, but he's showing you love too. He didn't do that to us either. Uh, but they do. These blackity black people, and another thing about this blackity black stuff, they will kill you. Not only will they uh, talk about you, but they will actually kill you. That's, that's a fact. That's their history. Those with this blackity black type mindset. Malcolm X was a victim. Oh my God! Yep. A lot of us are victims of them. Uh, Yahweh Ben Yahweh in Florida went to jail. His people run around murdering people. Uh -huh. 
because he wanted their property and he wanted the black people to praise him. Uh -huh. And a lot of black people say, you're not going to bully me. The sister brought up a good point. See, she using bullying tactics. Uh -huh. You're going to believe what I said. So she's going to raise her voice and that's bullying tactics. Uh -huh. Mr. Angel, yes, can I ask you a question? Yes, ma'am. Um, do you think that the reason why a lot of these people go, as you say, the blackity black route is yeah. because they're trying to counteract that deep, dark, psychotic hatred that they actually have for black? They're trying their best to throw that, in fact, off, which shows, you know, which is the reason why they, they contradict themselves and their actions don't add up to their words. Do you think that they're just there? It's a form of psychosis. You know, I'm gonna tell you this. See, this I've been around this stuff for a long time. When I was coming up, it was black power for real. It, it, it black power, soul power had no basis in your morality and all these different things that these people include in black power. Black power was simply power to the people as the Black Panthers expressed. It wasn't about all these other different things because in order to heal, in order to properly heal, you have to get yourself out of this situation. You, you, uh, you have to take yourselves out of this environment in order to properly heal. There are certain yeah. things that you can do but as long as we're in this cesspool, we got to do, you know, find other ways of trying to, to deal with that. And that's what, uh, that's what, uh, you know, religion and some of these teachers supposed to do is help us deal with that. But they fail. They continue to fail. But like going back again to, to the, what you were saying, Sister Tasha, many of these persons in 2021, this idea of black power has changed more than just being a revolutionary activity. And Malcolm mm -hmm. X, Malcolm X did not, uh, Malcolm X did not uh, mix the two in forming his new organization. He understood that you have to, you have to separate the two. One is mm -hmm. to liberate. And one is your own ideology, your own personal wants, ideology, and your personal religious beliefs. Hey. He separated the two. Uh, I would like a gyro tower and uh, French fries. And but now they have. But now they have blended. They have somehow blended these, these, the, the thought process, and blended them together. And that's one of the problems. And that religious type of mentality blended in with that, that's what's causing, like you said, sister, that's what's actually causing this psychosis. And it's their way or no way. Is it fair to say that they're that, that they want to like pro, produce their own black, their own definition of it? You know, the, you know, it looks like this, it acts like that. It believes uh -huh. this. So it's all under, they want to do programming. Is it fair to say? What's that again, sister? How did you say it? I said, is it, 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 is all of that ultimately the mentality is to produce and create their own black, the, a new black, which is, it looks like this, it acts like this, it thinks like this. You know what I mean? It, it's all under yet another program that mm. they have in mind when it comes to black people, these people who fall under the, the pro-black sector. I don't know, I guess, I think you have a point there. It's some kind of new blackness or something that they believe black supposed to be. And if you are an African-American, all of us supposed to look, you know, think the same, do the same, you know, all the same. That's not, a, that's not realistic. Because there's 40 million plus in this nation, and we'll never be able to be the same like that because our experience is different. We come up different. We think different. Everything about us is different. We need to focus on our similarities 
and work on from our similarities and focus from that foundation because we're never going to be the same it's never going to happen uh mm -hmm. nobody all the chinese are not the same you can go to that country they all don't agree with each other they don't act the same they don't look at view things that are the same or if you go to africa those african people they don't view themselves as the same they all types of different but you have this group of people that think that if you if you don't do what I say, you don't love black folk. And you're a coon, you're a sellout, you don't give a... No, our idea of looking at things is different from yours. It's simple as that. I don't want to be you. We're different. It's 40 million, it's never gonna happen. But to give you more insight to maybe somebody who can probably understand that uh, mindset, which I have great respect for the brother because he's shown, and the reason why he's here is because I believe this brother has shown a lot of growth and he understands this. He expressed it wonderful today on the program. I'm gonna pass the mic to our brother, Maurice Muhammad. Uh, thank you, uh, brother. Yes, sir. Thank you very much for allowing me to come on. Um, and our sister, Tasha, thank you for being here and everybody in the chat room as well. I wanna start out um, addressing A.B. Le A. Legend, where he says we are all human. It's only one race in the human race. Uh, from, a black per from a black first perspective, we, we disagree with that, okay? We disagree with that because we don't recognize Caucasians as being humans. Their actions does not signify the actions of a human being. So based on that, we don't agree with that. Um, now, with our sister and um, the way she dealt with the issue, uh, Tasha, I, I don't know what your, um, your positioning is, but just yeah. listening to you, you know, myself, I would not think that you really you you're you're seem like more like an integrationalist and um those of us that's in the black first we don't believe in integration so if you're coming along in that manner right then you know the coon word the other words they're going to come up so i i think for me in order for me to properly deal with you what is your political philosophy uh when it comes to black people and what we should be mm. <laughs> to be honest with you mm -hmm. i don't know anymore i don't know anymore. Mm. looking at the facts mm -hmm. being realistic knowing reality I don't know anymore. Hmm. Okay. Well, let's let's break this down a little bit. When you say knowing reality, what 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 do you mean when you say that? What do you mean by that? Of uh, uh, looking at the people, um, the mentality, the actions, the the actions that are taken day to day against each other. I don't know anymore. And are, are you specifically looking at the mentality of black people, white people, or all people? All people, everybody. I'm, uh, but with me being a black woman, of course, black people, but I study and analyze everything. Okay, okay. Now, I think you, you, in order to come out with a fair and balanced view and know your own positioning, you, you need to know who all uh, or who are for you and against you <laughs> in this okay. world. And, and do you believe, do you believe that white people and we're, and we're not, we're, we're talking as a whole and not mm -hmm. individual, but do you believe that white people have best interest for you? No. Okay. Okay. And, to, and can I be fair and honest? Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. I don't think black people do either. Okay. Okay. And do you think that um, the black people who don't have good interests, you know, for you, do you think that 
that is because of systematic things or do you believe you know that's just innate with them that's their nature mm. i think it's in certain individuals it's in their individual nature as far as black people you think is in black people's individual nature not yes to, to, okay and you think has that always been that way in your understanding i i think it goes back for the, the plantation okay so it goes back to to slavery beyond you, before you, slavery. if we were the first slavery? one then we had these types of individuals amongst us we ended up in bondage because of them in my opinion okay so the, the the black people that's in america right that that were slaves that that our ancestors that were slaves those are the ones that were victims correct because the yeah. the the africans on the continent helped the white people get them to for us to be forced here so those that are here are victims right yes 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 sir okay all right and so their mentality their mentality, their culture, everything comes from not what's before um, slavery, but it comes from everything after slavery. Would you agree? I, I don't know if I should agree with that. I don't feel okay. comfortable agreeing with that. Okay, can you show me why that statement that I made would not be a true statement? No, I'm not saying it's not true. Mm -hmm saying that I don't feel comfortable agreeing with that because I Why think it's far more comfortable because I believe it's a spiritual component here that we're dealing even with if it's spiritual because I, I agree with you I think it is a spiritual component but where did we get our religion from mm. where did where you know, we get that from slavery you know exactly so when you're looking at black people here in America and I have to separate them from the blacks over on the continent because their experience was not our experience. There's no people on this planet that went through what we went through. You, you have the, the Africans that were taken from Africa and went to Brazil. Now they was in slavery a hundred years after we were free, but their condition in Brazil is not like our condition. Okay, the same thing, the things we went through and how these white folks did us, those in Brazil did not do their Africans the same way. Okay, if you read the report on the study of the Negro family, it talks about slavery and what they did to us and how it was the most brutal system on the planet. And this is white folks talking about what they did to us okay so what i'm trying to get you to understand is that our problems is yes it is a spiritual yes it is a physical yes it is a mental but it all has the roots in the slavery right that's where the that's the heart of it that's why we teach the greatest word to define America is nigger. The greatest word to define America is nigger. Because he took a people, he took a good people and brought them here, stripped them of their name, their culture, their religion, made them call him Massa. When they, they made the God to recognize them as God. So when you do something to white people, you doing something to God's people. So yeah, our spirit, our physical, our mental, they completely destroyed us, completely. So when we understand that we're trying to now make it over again, we got to be reborn. We got to be rebuilt. And when we look at black power, we know that Richard Nixon, when he was president, he embraced black power. He embraced it. Did you know that? Yes. Okay. 
So when they ask him, you believe in black power? And he says, oh yeah, I believe in black power. But what does black power mean to white people who are capitalists? And what does black power mean to Stokely Carmichael who came up with the phrase? What does black power mean to the individual black man and woman that's on the street suffering? See, the Black Panthers were integrationalists. Did you know that? No. no. Yes, they were. They didn't believe in a society only for white, only for blacks, I'm sorry. They were integrationalists. They were integrationalists. That's why they had mixture with the Asians and the whites. They had all these mixtures. And that's one reason why they were so easily taken apart. But they were not what you would call black separatists like black first. They would reject black first because we don't believe in integration. Why don't we believe in integration? We believe integration is a hypocritical trick. Did you ever read the report on um, on the riots that happened in the in the sixties, did you ever read that Warren Commission report? No, I okay. know about them. Mm -hmm. Well, I read it and I did several programs on it. And in that report, it talked about equality. It listed every reason why black people have issues with the police, have issues with white people, and have issues with the government. It broke it down into three levels. And all of those issues we still have today. They said we have three options. One, we can really make this integration thing work. That's one option. Second option, we can just ignore it and let it be two garrisons. One black, one white, and they're going to get it on eventually. He said, or we can do the third option. We can lessen the tension in the black community by letting more of them out to build a stable middle class. So that way they'll have mannequins, and they didn't use the word mannequins, but they could have mannequins so that they can look to and say the system work. But we know we got to keep a, a, a lid on the ghetto. They said it's 12 million now. When it gets to be 20 million, it is totally impossible to integrate. Totally impossible. These are the white folks' words. They knew what they were creating. They didn't decide to really, let's make integration work. They decided to take some out, let's lessen the pressure in the black community, let some escape, put them up so that they can be mannequins in the window that says the democracy works. And then we'll close the tight back on the rest of them that's in the ghetto. We'll give some a measure of way out. And those that are able to take it, we'll let them rise in our society. Those who not, they'll die in the ghetto. Now, that's not a right way to be, but that's what they did to us. You suffer, we suffer from, from bad education. And it's been that way for centuries, for generations. And there's no will to fix it. Why? Because money is made off the backs of the poor. It's made off the backs of, look at all these 501c3 companies, no matter whether they're, they're churches, they're uh, 50C organizations, and all of these are supposed to help the downtrodden poor black people and raise their standard of living. But it has never happened. Why? Because if you solve that problem, you're going to tank the American economy. You're going to tank the American economy. So it's about how can I use the poor and make money off of them? So Black First understands the system of the enemy. And so we decide 
that we're going to make our own. We're going to use what's present and change it by taking power and understanding that the poor cracker, their problem is not black us. Their problem is the rich cracker. And those have always fought each other. There's always been a battle. Then when we get in the picture, the rich cracker say to the poor cracker, that nigga's your enemy. So you target that nigga because that nigga trying to take what you got. We ain't never trying to take what they got. We wanted our own. But this is the racist system that you have because the intelligent white folks at the top made it that way. They made it that way. So when you see the cracker with the rebel flag, see that's the poor cracker trash. And the, uh, the cracker with the American flag, that's the rich cracker. But the smartest of all, of all three of the different crackers is the British cracker. That's the chief cracker. That's the smartest one of them all. And they made systems that go around the world. And as I taught earlier today, you can run to any country you want. You still going to have to defeat this fake white supremacy. See, you cannot be a human being and you're in your mind is filled with white supremacy because that automatically says I'm better than you because I'm white and if you're going to be better than somebody it shouldn't be because the color of your skin or the lack of pigmentation it should be because of your behavior your behavior should be the standard of who's better or who's good versus who's bad it's the behavior, not the color of the skin. But for the cracker, they go off the color of the skin. I don't dislike white people because they're white. I dislike them because of their behavior. I hate them because of their nature, which is to do evil. And that's what they have done. And so they put us in a system where we trying to be free and fighting one another. Fighting one another because one may sound white. One may act white. But is their sounding and their acting, is it because they found that there's protection in that? Can they find that there's acceptance in that? Why? Because a nigga ain't nobody but a white person. If a white person tell me I'm good, you're damn right I'm good. If a white person tell me I can do this, you right I can do it. Because white people got the power to make you or break you. So that's why we as black first, we embrace us. And fuck everybody else. Why? Because everybody else knows how to use black people to push their arguments, to push their agenda, to fight for them. We cape for everybody, and nobody capes for us. Nobody capes for us. Nobody comes to, to save us. So we got to save ourselves. We got to save ourselves. And if we don't do it, if we don't save ourselves, then damn it, we deserve the death that these crackers going to put on us. They don't like us. Whenever they can think and plan that they were going to put us in ovens. And this is after World War II. Because down there in North Carolina, where they were doing forced sterilization on black women, they was like, fuck it, let's just put them in ovens. Let's just put, and this is in writing where you can go read their official transcripts. They were going to put us in ovens because they didn't like us. And they said, no, we, we can't do it and get away with it because if they find out, 
then we did the same thing Hitler do. So let's just keep doing the forced sterilization because it's quiet. The niggas don't know what we sticking them with. They don't know what we cutting so we can get away with it longer. And they did. They got away with it much longer. See, for a person to defend white people, to a black first person, we hate that. Because that's our enemy. And you're standing in the way of me dealing with my enemy. So I got to go through you before I can get the enemy. So that's why there's that clash between black. Because we love each other. We love our people. But when you start talking that whitey the white talk, then the hatred begins to brawl. The anger begins to come because this enemy has taken everything from us. And now when we look at another black person, we hear the cracker language coming out of their mouths. See, we as black first, we understand that we are the future of our people. Our unborn generations depend on what we do today. They depend on that. So you have to have a segment of your people that's willing to do whatever need to be done for the freedom of our people. So it's like they got a choice. They can deal with Brother Angel or they have to deal with me. Now in my heart, there's no mercy for none of them. None. I don't get on that level. But Brother Angel, his heart is different. And it's the same thing where they had Malcolm and they had Martin. They had a decision. Which one are you going to deal with? And they decided, fuck it, let's kill them both. Let's kill them both. They said, okay, let's do it. But they said, wait a minute, we got to kill Malcolm first. Because if we kill Martin first, Malcolm going to respond. We kill Malcolm first, Martin ain't going to do a damn thing. Because he's a pacifist. Yeah, okay, let's do it that way. And that's exactly what happened. But then what they didn't expect and didn't understand is the riots that took place, not because Malcolm was killed, but because Martin was killed. And they begin to look for and see who's the nigga that caused this riot. Who's giving them one frame of mind. And they found out there wasn't no one black person doing it. It was their own media. Because all of us black people was watching how they sick the dogs on us. We were watching. How they took the, 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 the sticks out and beat us. We were watching how they dragged us through the street. All of us was watching. And it created a mindset. And with that mindset, when they killed King, that mindset, oh, we're going to fuck you up now. So we went to burning. So they say now. We got to change that. We got to take away these black shows. Take away Tony Jer Black Journal. And let's call it Tony's, Tony's Journal. See? They had to go and turn the mechanisms around so that you don't have one mind now. So what are we watching on TV? Miley Cyrus and all this other whitey dee white crap. Taking away your one mind. Your sense, you're taking it away because they know in order for them to rule you, you can never have a strong opinion of who you are. You can never love yourself to the degree that you have to love yourself in order to outdo this enemy. So when they learned that in the 60s, the black teenagers we're getting a backbone. They said, oh, we got to break this. And again, what I'm telling you 
is in record. It's in record. It's in writing. But what they say, you want to keep it from a nigga, put it in a book. Because they ain't going to read it. Well, I've been reading. And the more I read, the more I hate them. Because the plans that they put on us is in black and white. It's in black and white. They are our enemy. They are. And there's no, you can cry about it. It ain't going to change their nature. It ain't going to change their heart. It's not. So this problem has to be dealt with. But what has to happen between black us, we got to come to understand the necessity of people like black first. You got to understand that this kind of mentality is needed because without it, without people like our sister deity, myself, without black first people, who going to hold the line? Who's going to put that, that pride of black into our children where it needs to be? When I asked a white woman, and I'm going to shut up after this, I asked an old white woman, because she was around before integration. I asked her, what do you think? Do you think black people should have integrated? Did we get what we should have gotten out of it? She says, well, it's like a kind of 50-50. The bad part of it, you had to surrender who you were in order to join us. You understand? You had to surrender who you are in order to join white folks. And the black folks that I asked who was around prior before integration, every last one of them said we should never have done it. And these blacks that I asked are well-to-do blacks. And all of them said we should never have done it. So for me, knowing what I know, I have no choice but to be black first. Because that's our saving grace. Integration hurt us. It hurt us. For those white folks who want to be human, that want to be human, I ain't got time to go look for them. But they want to be human. They'll understand my language. Because they understand what we've been through. And they understand what they allow to happen to us. Now they can't join me. But they can join Angel. They can join him. But we are our only saving grace. We have to save ourselves. In order for us to be worthy of the respect of the world. This, we're living in the change of worlds, and it's our time to be on top. But they're not going to just give it, lay down and give it. You got to take it. You got to take it. So, my sister, I hope, I hope that I shed it some light because I want you to be able, with confidence, with security, to understand Black First. And for you to accept it and be that way. But I know it takes time. It takes time and it takes learning and it takes patience. Because it, sometimes people say, oh, Maurice, some of the stuff you just say don't make no sense. Then they come back around, well, it makes sense. But I don't know if it makes sense for you to say it. It don't make sense for you to say it because you're going to piss them people off and one day they're going to come get you. In hell. They've been after me. They've been after me and I had to do a video one day say, hey, look, if, if, if they come and say that I, I killed myself, know that that shit is a lie. 
Because they were sending the message not only to me, but my children. This is real. This ain't no pipe dream. When you come after power, you're going to bring that heat. But this is the heat we got to go through for the love of our people. So Black First, we do what we do. Even though we know the majority of our people don't even understand it. But you, if you live long enough, you'll understand it. And the by and by, you'll be thankful. Because we are who we are. Brother Andrew, thank you for allowing me to say these words, dear brother. I didn't mean to come and talk, talk, talk. But it just, you know, my, my sister was on the attack and that there was not a lot of explanation mm -hmm. of what's what when it comes to Black First. And um, so I, I had to jump on and I thank you for allowing me to jump on and to say what I had to say. And I hope that it, it is constructive because I want our people to understand what Black First is about. Because mm -hmm. you, 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 look, we, we need each other. And that's real at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. We need each other. You know, I was on, I think I was being interviewed on Alquan's program about Mississippi Initiative. And um, they were talking about my enemies. And they was like, well, um, uh, Talek, Angel Snub knows he's your enemy. I said, no, he's not my enemy. He, he's not my enemy. The cracker is my enemy. He ain't did nothing to me like what the cracker did. He ain't my enemy. The cracker is my enemy. And I don't want us to be enemies of each other, especially now. Especially now. So if we can, if we can try to work together, try to work together, and work with each other and not against each other because we're going to need each other. That's the reality. That's the reality. And the only way we're going to get out this is with each other. So if you, if, if the cracker break your arm over there, then we need to make sure we answer that. We need to make sure that we feel in the pain of our brother and our sister. And we need to be the answer for our, our, our brother and our sister. We are black first. Yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Thank you, dear brother. You're welcome. You're welcome. Are you going to stick with us a little bit more? Little uh, more? If you want me to, I can. Okay. Uh, Sister Tasha, yes. did you want to did you want to respond to what our brother brought to us? Mm -mm. <laughs> 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 <Woo! laughs> hey, that was a good one. Hey, that was a good one, Sister Tasha. <laughs> you said what? <laughs> <laughs> I won't be stupid enough to respond. <laughs> mm -mm, mm -mm. I just shook my head. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Okay. No. <laughs> yeah, this, this, this is what I want to say. <clears throat> Brother Muhammad, because I didn't want Brother Muhammad to, to leave because I, I just wanted to make a, I wanted to make a point here. <clears throat> because he said, you know, uh, I'm black first. You know, you whitey, you know. I don't I don't do whitey, you know, I'm black first. But Angel, you know, he got room over there on the, on the yellow bus. Go over there, you know, kick it, kick it Angel. Now see, if we watch the Mississippi campaign promotional video, or if you take anything that I've ever said about the Mississippi campaign, I don't remember inviting white people to get on board the solar train. I've never said that. I never said, we're going to take control of Mississippi, and I want y'all white folks to help me, 
and the, and the, and the Asians or, or whatever. I never said that. It said to inspire the black people that's in that in that state to make certain moves. I did not add nobody else to the equation. They there have to deal with other people. But my target is soul brother and sister. Now, can a white man be a soul brother? If the people decide he can be an honorary, back in the day, the, the Native Americans, and even in Africa, they make honorary teachings out of almost anybody. It's just ridiculous over in Africa. Now, anybody can be. As long as you got some money, you can roll up and be an African chief. They don't, they don't cheapen their brand. <laughs> no, that's what they have cheapened their brand. Anybody. Mm -hmm. As long as you got some money, you can go to Africa. Uh, you can go on the internet right now. Chinese or, or honorary chiefs and, 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 and mm -hmm. white folks. Anybody. As long as you got some money, you buy. They, they cheapen their brand. Now, if you want to be an honorary soul brother, if you show me you're willing to die with me, you can be honorary. But don't bring your honorary ass if you get some soul sister. That we that we don't play that. That that don't work. You get you another honorary soul white woman, and y'all can we can do this together. That's the way I saw it, the Native Americans do it. Yeah, you my brother, but you ain't gonna have my Indian woman. We're gonna have to find you another white woman to get with. Now, sometime down in the future, when we all dead and gone, maybe they've worked things out and people don't trip on these things. But during our day and time, we got to trip on them because we have to show our love for each other. I don't want no white woman. I want a sister. You never see me. In Vogue is not white. You don't never see me. I don't bring, I mean, they can come on here as a guest. I have no romantic interest in Caucasian women at all. Never have. I want you to be like my mama. What they said in the black community, if you can't use my comb, my mama's comb, I can't do it with you. That's how we play. So all my talk about the Mississippi campaign, you never hear me talking about integrating with nobody. I am saying that these people are here and I'm gonna have to deal with them. Now, this is the relationship that we're gonna have with them. Look, you know, if you get in the way, we're gonna have a problem. Now, if you want to assist or stay neutral, that's cool. But I'm not asking them for their help, they're in the way. They're just here. But see, we dominate the state of Mississippi. So it's gonna be our way. It, and most of them, they won't like, uh, they won't like the fact that we're taking control of that state anyway. They'd be ready to move and get the hell out. Good. You think I'm gonna get on TV? Please, white people. We love everybody here. We humanitarians. Please, sir, don't leave. I don't give a damn. Roll out. I know who the I know who the enemy is. I've been dealing with him all my life. And then they put that knife in my heart. It took ten years of my life. I ain't forgot that. It was them. I know how even a wicked. Matter of fact, that was my test for them. I've never seen a people behave and act that way. These are some really dirty, dirty bastards. And the only thing I'm telling us is we got to be smart. I'll slick the fox. Be wise how you move. See, this is my thinking process. There are people who deal with snakes and they play the music, or whatever. You call them snake charm. But that snake got the potential to bite you and kill you. Now, something else about a snake. A snake can save your life. If you're out in the desert somewhere, you ain't having to eat, kill a snake. He saved your life. The same thing that can poison you and kill you can actually save your life. We got to be learn how to be snake charmer. Know how to use the snake for your own purpose. Also a snake. You can take his own poison and make an anti-venom and heal yourself. This is talking about it on a spiritual level, but also on a physical level because you can take snake poison and make an antibody 
and save yourself from the poison. All I'm telling us, we cannot beat this man physically one on one. We cannot do that. But we can outslick the slickster. We can take the tools, we can take the things that we have and use it against us. That's all I'm saying. I'm not talking. I'm not. And as far as integration is concerned, we've always been integrated on a slave plantation because integration means you mix. Because we shouldn't be with them anyway. That's integration from the very beginning. The closest we're going to get here is segregation, which was a wonderful thing. Because I lived in segregation. I told you, when I was a little boy, I didn't even see white folks until I was, what, five, six years old? I didn't even know what white people look like. And my and my people never talked about them. My people never talked about them. So I didn't know who the hell they was. I was astonished when I saw my first white man. Oh, there's no white man on our land. <laughs> well, I didn't know it was a white man. I said, what the hell is a strange looking guy? I had never seen one in my life. Then when it comes to, to, to black first, everybody is not like Maurice. Many of these people are very nasty. They call you all these different names and, and whatever because they don't understand where you're coming from or whatever. You're supposed to think the way they think. And then when they buck up, I buck back. And then they go cry. What I do? What I do? Angel calling me these names. Uh, I'm a piece of trash. I'm a sewer rat. You call me names first. You call me an integrationist. You call me a Sambo, Uncle Ruckus, and any name you can think of. So I fire back at you. What you crying for? Take for tack. What's good for the goose? Good for them. You want to we'll call names? Let's do it. And they accuse me of things like Sister Deity does earlier and some of these other people. And I said, show the proof. Because I'm not an integration. All I'm doing is trying to be slick. And see, this is the other thing. You want me to just reveal how I think. You don't do that with the enemy. Because you've got to have some kind of surprise factor. You can't just go out here and tell them how you're going to move, what you're going to do. you got to have some kind of surprise for these suckers. Because if they know how you're going to move, how you do things, then they're gonna, they can react to those things. I don't want to be like that. I mean, you got to keep some things secret. They want to come to me, well, what you going to do there? How you going to do that? How you going to do that? Keep your happy ass away. Keep doing things the way that you're doing. Because clearly, they don't, they're not working. I mean, because if you were working, there would be no need for Agent Snuff Number 7 or the Reality Simple Ministry if you was working. The reason why I exist is because it's time for this stuff to come to an end. And if I don't, and, and you're not doing nothing. Because if you bring it to an end, I said, believe me, I'll be happy to sit down and I will help you because I've helped these people. They won't help me, but I will help you. But not keep doing the same old thing, think that you're going to get a different result. Here I am. I go to the Nation of Islam Temple on two occasions and they threatened to beat me up. And uh, the New York Temple responded because I reported it to Chicago. And the New York Temple responded about these threats that these people have given me. Now, the St. Louis Temple, one of the temples that, well, it was, I got threatened with the St. Louis Temple twice. They never offered apology or nothing. It was the New York Temple that offered an apology. Why are you threatening me? I'm bringing... I'm bringing guests to your house. I'm buying bean pies, fish, and whatever. Why are you so nasty with me? Oh, you, you know what you said about the minister. What did I say about the minister? Oh, you know what you said. No, you said I said something that you don't like about the minister. If it upset you that much, sir, what did I say? Why are you asking me what I said? How is that love? How is calling this sister, that's a white woman's point. And you sound like a white supremacist and, and, and calling people Uncle Tom's and Sam Bowles. That's nasty. How is that black love? How is that black first? 
if that's black first, I don't. I really don't want nothing to do with because you get mad at somebody because they were. Let me tell you something. There's Forty million people in this country. They're not going to do. They're not going to be what you think they're going to be. Never going to happen. It's never. So that is a pipe dream. But what can happen is that we can take everything that we have similar and work from that foundation and work our way up. That's what we can do. Because actually we, we have more in common than we have different. We claim that we want to change this condition. We, we claim that we want to be liberated from this oppressor. Well, that's what I want. That's what I thought that's what all y'all want. How are you going to achieve that goal by ostracizing people because you sound like you talk white? And we speak English. Everybody talks white, including your happy ass, except you speak Ebonics or whatever. So I don't like people lying on me. I don't like people making false accusations because you don't understand. Now, I've tried to bring the Mississippi campaign and everything I do, the simplest, in the simplest manner I can do, I cannot baby you. I cannot, I'm not going to sit around here, spend 24 hours a day, and hope that you understand. Because really, I don't give a damn. You ain't that stupid. I give you that benefit of a doubt. You're not that damn stupid. No, what you want is a, a slave. You want a slave like your cracker master, your black power ass. That's what it want. You want me to be your slave. You want me to bow down to your African spiritual God and all this other nonsense and, and the Egyptians. I'm not interested in all that bull doo doo. I just want to be free. You can take all that stuff and kick rock. I'm not your slave. And see, that's another thing. These people want slaves. I'm not your slave. I'm going to always be, be Kuta Kente. I have no interest in being Toby, my friend. Whether the slave master is a peck of wood or whether the slave master is you. And I'll be damned, I'm going to let a slave be a slave to a slave because that's all y'all need your ass is, a slave. Bow down to you. I know. I'd rather be dead. I'd rather be dead. And I'd rather stay with the peck of wood than go anywhere with y'all ass because y'all not just. You're not just. You're not fair. You're just as evil and wicked and nasty as this peck of wood. I want nothing to do with that. And that's been my experience. And that's the one of the main reasons why I start talking a lot about pan-Africanism and pro-blackness. But the people that I was dealing with some were some nasty people, how they treated me. They make pan-Africanism, they make pro-blackness look really, really terrible. I don't want nothing to do with that. And those who come and listen under the sound of my voice here, we don't want nothing to do with that. I'm not going to be your slave, my friend. You don't tell me what to do. I would rather stay with Joe Biden than go anywhere with you with your happy ass. Because messing with these crazy ass niggas, they'll have you under guillotine. Because I disrespected the African God. Take your African God and kick rock. I don't give a damn about you and your African God. Joe Biden don't make me bow down to no African God. So I stick with the pecker wood. That's the way I look at it. I'm not gonna do it. You're not, you're just as bad as the pepper would. Matter of fact, if it wasn't for white fur, there wouldn't be black fur. Mm -hmm. If it wasn't for white supremacy, it wouldn't be no black supremacy. All these is a response to our conditions. All this stuff would not even exist if it wasn't for the conditions. So I don't want to be like them. They want to be involved in skin color so I embrace what we call soul because soul has no color. You can't call me a racist. I'm a soul brother number one. What you mean black? I didn't say nothing about black. I said soul brothers and sisters. The descendants of slaves born in this country. I didn't say nothing about my skin color. How you gonna call me a racist? When did soul become a race? I don't do that. I want to be different. I want to get away from that concept because that was the concept that caused our problem to begin with. Fight fire with fire. I guess that's what you're trying to do, fight fire with fire. It works sometimes. Most of the time, you can't fight fire with fire. So it's late, y'all. 
and we can continue the conversation. And that wasn't even the topic. The, the topic was the issue between black women and men. Now we talk about black first and white supremacy and, and, and all this other stuff. I mean, it's a conversation we can have. It's wonderful. It's needed. Because I think Sister Tasha, you know, I mean, Brother Maurice was right there. I'm not an expert on black first. I'm not a representative. I can't tell you about how you do that. And then when I was had that type of mentality, I was ready to kill for real. I told you, I go to my thing was going to the White House, assassinate the president. And you just oh, had this you just had this brother that uh ran his car into the Capitol building, you know, with that type of mindset. So I, I appreciate the sister gone. It's late, y'all. Thank you, Brother Maurice. It's late. And I, I really appreciate it. Your words were powerful. It brought us more understanding. But I also wanted to, to bring, you know, some understanding from my point of view, because I'm not, I'm not, I'm not integration. I'm not that. I'm just trying to outslick the switchman, out fox the fox. That's what I want to do. And move as easily as I can without confrontation. Because everything that we want to do should be constitutionally legal. What you bother me for, sir? I want to put them in a position so when we sue them, the reparations that we should have got, we're going to get on this level. So if I said something, brother, that you probably disagree with because you need to respond, I mean, I can listen if you want to. I, we can go ahead and if you want to respond. But I'm tired as a heck. I did, we did four, I did four hours today already. And now we're doing two hours. That's six hours right there. You know, that's not like that's a job going to work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it, it's okay. I, I can save my my um, points that I wanted to make for a later time. I'm, okay. quite, I'm quite sure we'll, we'll get back together again. Yeah. And do another program. Yeah, yeah, it's it's late, and I got to get up in the morning yes, to make this drive to, to visit my 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 little girl. So uh -huh. I yeah. understand. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm why. You know, the, the sister. You know, we had that little argument or whatever. I wanted to go ahead. She wanted to do this to the uh, the broadcast, so I went on and done it. Cause I mean, I don't have. You know, we don't. We've been rocking. We've been rolling together for what two years? Going on three years. Mm -hmm. You know. She, yeah, but people I, on the outside that don't know our relationship, oh, see, she breaking ain't just not enough seven down. She did it. <laughs> oh. we, 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 uh, that ain't how it works. Mm -hmm. She gonna. I, I, was, I was happy to, to hear her on. Yeah, and uh, I wanted to to uh, at least make contact with her and um, see if she come over and spend some time on our panel yeah. with us. Yes, yeah, she as will. Well. I will, but, if you want me to, I'll send her your email and contact information. Yes, do that for me, please. Yeah. Do that for me, please. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah, I'll do that for you. And hey, uh, I, I, I'm getting good people from you. You know that, right? I'm still at the phone. Yeah, Sister, Sister Nova said she want to say something real quick. I, I, I want to address something right quick. Where the hell am I bringing you down? You, <laughs> you folks that claim that I'm bringing you down, first of all, you, you're older than me. Why? Why are you trying to order you around, control you? Yeah. And you're older than me. Yeah. And, I, and, I, and, and, and that's not to say I'm, 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 I'm being, you know, I'm being uh, I'm not being snide in my, in my comment. I mean, I'm not trying to be disrespectful to you or disrespect your age. That's not it. That's not it. Mm -hmm. You know, you're the elder. You're an elder. That's what these, these knuckleheads don't realize. And even if you don't call yourself an elder, you are an elder yeah. of the community. What the hell I look like trying to order you around I mean, that's not even something you would even allow. You would not allow that. To, you know, somebody took control and, and bought you around. So for them to say that, oh, Sister Noble, Sister Noble bringing him down, Sister mm -hmm. Noble controlling him, mm -hmm. I mean, what are they trying to say? <laughs> I think they're being disrespectful. 
disrespectful trying to call you weak. Uh-huh. And a punk. That's what I think. They're being disrespectful trying to call you weak and a punk. You're, you're an elder of the community. These folks don't have no respect. They don't have no respect for you. Like, they, they, they just don't have no respect for you. You know, and, your, and, 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 the, and the wisdom that you bring day after day, and the knowledge that you bring day after day, they're not listening. Yes, ma'am. If you're telling them, you're telling them all that black power stuff, you've done it. You've been there, you've done that before. It's not going to work. Mm-hmm. It's not going to work. Yes, ma'am. Because when they do it, they do it with visitors rights and wouldn't let me play basketball and I couldn't have a soda pop and some chips and, and whatever. Yeah. I can't be controlled by soda pop and chips. I can't be controlled by television or basketball. You're not weak. You're yeah. not a weak guy. Yeah. Not even sex can control. No. Okay. No. And for the record, everybody you know everybody thinks oh they have sick they have sick. Uh, no, I'm still strong. Okay, I've been selling for few years now, okay? What I'm, I'm trying to make a point. I'm trying to make a point. Sex can't even control you. No. Period. Because you're not a weak guy. That's what these knuckleheads fail to realize. You're not somebody that, okay, they can pump you out and then run over you and, and, and basically control you. That's not what type of person you is. That's, that's, not, that's not who you are. And you're not going to let nobody control you, no know one. And and, and, and I told them that that's not going to happen because of my bully experience. I can't handle that. When I feel like somebody trying to control me and whatever, that, that kicks me in. I'm ready to fight to happy Yeah. You know, you want to call me name? Those are fight words. Let's do it then. Your name versus my name. I don't, uh-huh. I, let's get down. I don't care about that. I'm, you know, I'm not going to let you punk me out like that. You uh-huh. get loud, I can get loud too. Matter of fact, I, I probably can get louder than your happy ass can. Because I'm just loud anyway. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, it was a nice live stream. And I guess uh, they was calling it Nup Springer. I'm just going to go listen to the whole live stream. Yeah. I, I well, it wouldn't have been no argument. Deity's got this thing about calling people names and they don't do what you know what she wants. And that sister came out like a tiger. And then Deity back back off. She shouldn't have done that to begin with. That sister didn't uh, call her no name. You sound like a white woman. That's white woman talking point. You know, so that sister decided, you know, I'm not gonna deal with this, and she politely was getting ready to leave. And that's what she that's what Deity really started going in on it. She heard it, came back. Hey, look, baby, I'm not no punk like that. And then it, then, uh, then Nup Springer started. Uh, <laughs> but uh, on that note, Nup Springer sleepy as hell. Let me get out of here, <laughs> brother, brother Muhammad. Yes, sir, dear brother. Man, you, again. you've been fine. This, this was a good week for you, right here. I mean, you 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 was bringing the heat, mm-hmm. and I thank you so much for. Uh, 
what you had to say say to us. A lot of people never heard you really talk. They was like, "Wow, that's no reason." Yeah, <laughs> yeah they never really heard you talk before. Mm. So I'm glad that everybody enjoyed everything outside of Nut Springer. You know, <laughs> you know, I can I can't control people. You know, when people start doing that, you know, you get your YouTube channel and get people when they get emotional or whatever. You can't control that stuff. The people get emotional. I was there. Stop! 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 The only way I could really stop it, I would actually have to just flip them off, take them off the air, because they're not gonna stop. She's not gonna stop. So I, I can't control people, you know. Hell, sometimes I can't control myself. Remember <laughs> the battle? Remember the battle for Mississippi? <laughs> sure do. <laughs> can't control myself sometimes. <laughs> so you know. So we're gonna get out of here. Uh the deacon said, appreciate your time, Marie, Sister Noble, and up seven. Yes. Thank you, everybody in the chat room. It was a lot of comments, and we actually had a real nice crowd. I didn't think we were going to get nobody tonight. I don't know. Maybe y'all night owls or something. I don't know. <laughs> but generally, I'm in bed at 8 o'clock. <laughs> mm. <laughs> so this way past my bedtime. Mm. So thank you, Brother Marie. Thank you, yes, Sister sir. Anthony, Sister Tasha, everybody. And uh, we'll catch y'all on the flip. Until next time. As Don Camille is always saying, wish us love, peace, and follow. Where's my little thing? Ding, ding, ding. You know, and 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 deity, uh oh, still alive on there. <laughs> Let me cut this off. Let me cut this off. <laughs>